Isang mapagpalang araw po sa inyong lahat. Good day everyone. Again, this is Brother Jonas and welcome to Limitless Living Series. Experience breakthrough in every area of your life. Yay! Maraming maraming salamat po. Live na live muli tayo. Maraming salamat sa pagmamahal. I just want to honor everyone who's supporting this series. And uh, if you're watching sa kahit sang lugar man, please do share here your name, your location, of course. And please greet your friends, tag them as well. And I know that you are so excited dito sa Limitless Living series natin na ito. Our topic for today is all about how to discover your passion. Oh my gosh, what an amazing topic, discovering your passion in life. I'm very sure that you will learn a lot of things today. After we finish our live, you will learn to discover. You will have some uh, tips in order for you to know the things that you really love doing. That's my mission for today. Live sa ating CBRC TV. Shout out to all the team members ng ating Carl Balita TV, uh, Review Center TV. Marami marami salamat. And of course, to Dr. Carl Balita, thank you so much for this opportunity. Before we start, can I request everyone to please close your eyes? And feel the presence of the Lord, the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today I open myself to God's blessings, healing, and miracles. Today I open myself to God's word. So that I become more like Jesus every day. And today I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I am God's servant. I am God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I am blessing the world in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. They have the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Marami marami salamat po sa mga nanonood ngayon. Of course, before we start, this is our tradition. I want to request everyone to please write in the comment section one thing that you are grateful for. This week, and what is your biggest win this week? Can you please share that sa ating comment section? I just want to know, of course, that's our gratitude corner, okay? I want to know, please list down um, everything, okay? Ano ang pinaka-pinagpapasalamat mo this week, okay? And please also highlight, ayan, paki-highlight na lang lahat ng mga... Um, yan, magagandang nangyari. Why gratitude? Because gratitude is uh, not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all others. Okay? I love that. That's amazing. And our topic, how to discover your passion. And this is primarily dedicated to all the people out there who are still searching for the things that they need to do, that they want to do, for the things that they want to pursue in life. So I want to share my story first. And it's, this is my personal story. I am a professional nurse and I practiced my profession for almost 10 years. One decade, wow. One decade working as a professional nurse. I was given the chance to work for three years as a clinical instructor. And then after that, I worked as a call center agent for almost two years. And then after that, I worked in the Sultanate of Oman as a staff nurse. And in the past four years of my nursing career, I worked as director of nursing research. And during those times, I was actually trying to discover the things that I want to pursue in life. One day, I was called to preach. Like someone invited me to preach at the feast. It's a Catholic organization, congregation, charismatic community headed by Brother Bo Sanchez. And so I was a bit doubtful because, no, I'm not really that much good. I felt like I was lacking and I felt that I, am, I was not deserving as a messenger okay, of God. I need to preach. And I need to lead some. I was not qualified. And so I tried to shy away that request. And, you know, kept myself focused on the things that I'm doing as a director of nursing. But during those times, there were moments when I felt like God was calling me to do something. And I just focused on my work as a staff nurse, as director of nursing research. Until one day, I felt like I was dragging myself to work. Did you experience that? You are not just happy. There's something missing inside of you. You're searching for something that you do not know. But I felt I was okay. I was okay with my salary. I was okay with my post. I'm a director of nursing research in one of the regions in Oman. And people respect me. And also I was enjoying what I'm doing. And, but then I felt like I was dragging myself to work. 
And so I reflected, I told myself, what are the things that I need to do? I, I prayed for that job. In fact, I prayed so hard for God to bring me to work overseas because I have so many dreams also in my life. And so after around four years of working or three years, there was this call. Okay, There was this, I don't know the feeling. I don't know the, what's inside that kept me demotivated, that kept me unhappy, even though I was having that huge amount of salary. I was actually receiving six-digit salary. That's around 130,000, 120,000 pesos per month. And the job was okay. I was working from 7 a.m. to 2 p.m. But there was something in me. I don't know what's that missing. And so one day, I read a book by Robin Sharma. The title is The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. And one of the pieces of advice I learned from that book is to have a soul-searching activity. And so I decided to go on a hotel, yeah, hotelcation, for five days alone. I brought with me my notebook and also I, I brought a lot of books. My plan was to read more books and, of course, to commune with the Lord. So according to that book, quiet moment will allow you to reflect, will allow you to think about you know, uh, things that's disturbing you and even your next best step. So I brought out my journal with one big question. Jonas, you're okay. You're okay with your salary. And also, you are okay with your job. You prayed for this. You are a director of a nursing research. But why are you still, still sad? So what's the problem? And I started scribbling. I started writing and and trying to figure out the things that I really want to pursue as well in my life. And you know what? After five days without phones and not conversing with anybody else, I even deactivated my account. I just focused on myself. And that time I felt like God was calling me to write books and to speak to inspire. So those moments I, I felt the calling, but I was not prepared. I mean, I was not, I cannot speak in front of people. I'm a bit shy. And also, I was not that much um, trained in writing using the English language. So I don't know how to write a book. But then there was something in my heart, Jonas, write a book, speak to inspire. And during that time, I was already leading the piece. And so I, I also started some vlog, yeah, video blog on my Facebook. I had around three to five minutes video just to inspire people. But I felt like I really need to improve. And one day, one of my friends contacted me. He was from, he was working in Singapore, and he told me, Jonas, you know what? I really want to help you. If you want to become a motivational speaker, please do find time to search a club in there. The name of the club is Toastmasters International. And I thought, yeah, Toastmasters International. I decided to research, and I, I found the website, and I actually called the number posted in there. And they said, we are very much, you are very much welcome here. You come and visit us, you sit for a while, and then you observe. If you think this is the perfect club for you, then you can join. And during that weekend, I attended the meeting for Toastmasters International. And you know what? I was so happy. I was a bit afraid, but I was excited. I told myself, this is the club that I was searching for because it's a public speaking, speaking club. It's a leadership club as well. And so... I enrolled, I joined. So every week we need to deliver some speech. We have some extemporaneous speaking as well. So I started my journey as a motivational speaker. And after that also, I was searching for a book writing program because I want to become an author. And so I enrolled in some of the classes. I also separated some budget for me in order for me to uh, enroll and join different uh, book writing classes. And after that, I was... I started to plan also for my book launch and, and all the things while I was also preaching at the Peace Oman and working also as a full-time nurse. Now, people always ask me, you know what, Brother Jonas, you're a nurse. You're a nurse by profession and you became a full-time motivational speaker and also a full-time published author. So I was, I was telling myself, I was thinking, oh my gosh, yeah, what happened? I was prepared. I was groomed to become the best nurse. In fact, my, my school, my alma mater groomed me to become the best nurse. I was a fifth um, placer, board top nature in the Guyan Valley during the 2009 nursing licensure examination. I also graduated with honors. I even completed two of my master's degree. I have master's in public health. I have master's of science in nursing administration. And so I was heading to that, you know, maybe being a chief nurse and working in one of the biggest hospitals in the UK or US. And then suddenly there was the shift. 
because I felt like I wanted to, I really want to abandon my nursing career to pursue other things that will make me happy. Now, I'm so grateful for those 10 years. In fact, these are uh, those 10 years are actually one of the best years of my life. I mean, I did enjoy and I learned a lot and I also had a lot, fostered a lot of friendship and touch also lives of people, patients, and I enjoyed that. But then one day, I decided to quit my nursing degree and pursue my passion full time. Are you listening now? And you also want to change career because maybe you are tired. Maybe you're dragging yourself as well to work. Listen to me. This is the perfect video for you because I want to teach you how to pivot doing what you do now and to jump into the next thing that you need to do. How to discover your passion, okay? How to pursue your passion. That's our topic for today. I met a lot of people. I have a friend, in fact, she's actually a nurse but she wanted to pursue a career in uh, event planning event hosting and today i was so happy because today she had after she resigned in the sultanate of oman two years ago as a nurse today she had her first big break and i've also a friend in the sultanate of oman working as a nurse and that she loves to cook actually i love her cupcakes and whenever she cooks something for us it's it's heaven like you will love it really and she pivoted from being a nurse to being a baker, a chef. And now this home, I'm actually here with one of my authors, Author Ellen. Author Ellen is an accountant. Yeah, She works in one of the biggest companies here in the Philippines. But you know what, what she do now? Yeah, she does. She's actually cooking. Okay, she launched her book, I Am Happy in My Kitchen. Too. This is her home. Thank you so much. Shout out to Author Ellen for this opportunity. My point here is sometimes you are being boxed by society. We are being forced by other people to do some things that we do not like. For example, someone wanted to pursue painting maybe or art, but was but then forced by other people to do this, to become a manager, maybe to become a nurse or doctor. But deep within her, she wanted to pursue something. That's our topic for today, the pivot, okay? And I think during this generation, the past five years, it was there was a major shift for me, huh? Because before we are, we are so much attached with opportunity to retirement but now the millennials they are discovering a lot of things and they are actually utilizing their gifts most of them i saw one who is who graduated cum laude in her uh, graduate study but then was the passion in building a youth ministry imagine that serving the church and she loves that and she enjoys what she do okay and until today i was so amazed and i was actually wondering you did great in your studies, but now you you pursued a different career. That's our topic for tonight. Are you ready? Yeah, maybe a doctor turned painter turned author turned motivational speaker. Maybe um, someone working in the corporate world. Yeah, turn into a chef. Maybe we don't know. But uh, my topic for tonight is for you to discover the things that will make you happy. Not only to discover but to pursue and to plan. How will I pivot? How will I shift? Okay? So discovering your passion, I will share with you, okay? I will share with you five, tips, five tips for everybody. Are you ready? Number one, first, it's all about soul searching activity, having a quiet time. You will only discover the loudest voice from your heart. You are in quiet, deep contemplation the answer most of the question let's give my journal and i always ask myself what do you want to pursue what do you want to do for the rest of your life and it did help me a lot and whenever you are in your quiet moment okay quiet contemplation it will actually lead you to your purpose so you will not discover that for one day I will not discover that for one week, but I was able to discover that for years, maybe two years, three years, until finally I told myself, okay, this is what I'm gonna do. And during those quiet moments of five days, I will never forget June 1 to 5, 2015. It's during those moments that I wanted to shift in my career, that I wanted to pursue public speaking, that I wanted to pursue full-time book writing. And Praise God, thank the Lord, because I really thank the Lord for this opportunity because I'm now doing this full time for three years, okay? So again, soul searching activity. Um, I, I read one quote that says, when we study other people, we are called intelligent. 
But when we study ourselves, we are called enlightened. And you need enlightenment for the things that you want to pursue. Again, this society will always box us. Like we don't have any choice. During my time, I need to work because I need to provide, provide for my family. And here's what I realized. There is a way. You can actually still do that. You can still help and serve your family while you are pursuing your passion. So that's what I did. I did not just jump. I planned, okay? I gave almost everything, all my time, just doing some uh, reflection. And when I work overseas, I stayed alone in a room, in a flat. And you know what? It was so helpful. Because I didn't have time to speak to most people. I speak to my, I, I have like video call session for my family. But most of the time I was alone. And mind you, being alone, especially okay not talking to anyone fasting also fasting from people fasting from your social media will give you clarity and it indeed gave me clarity so there were moments most of the time i travel alone the bus and during those moments that i realized the things that i want to pursue again quiet moments are very crucial in discovering your purpose you talk to god you contemplate you have some quiet moments wherein you think about the things that you want to pursue, the things that you want to, you want um, that will make you happy. And uh, if you will do that, for example, you will have a soul search activity for five days in a hotel. You try to answer some questions. What are the things that I want to do? This world is so noisy. We'll live in a world full of distraction. And you know what's the worst distraction that we have now? Social media. So much noise. Like we cannot even turn our eyes from our Facebook Messenger, TikTok. You know, like there is a purpose. And we are grateful for Facebook because of this platform. Okay, we can help other people to what. But sometimes it becomes detrimental if you are so much focused in what we do. So digital distraction. So how about days where you think about yourself? How about days when you ask yourself, okay, about the things that will make you happy? So that's the first step, quiet moment, quiet contemplation. Amen. That's number one. Number two is this. So during your quiet moment, first is have some quiet time, quiet moment. Number two is to ask yourself the things that you really want to do, the things that you enjoy a lot. For example, that my friend, my friend enjoys much um, event planning. She loves that. And she's in her best self whenever she does that, yeah? And she's enjoying, actually. And she discovered that in the past five years. So what are the things that you enjoy now? Don't worry first, okay? When you are contemplating, do not, don't check first the money, the finance, the revenue. You ask first, what do you want? If you're working as an employee now, do you love what you do? Because if you don't like what you do, then please do embrace that. If you don't like what you do, then please find a way to enjoy, to embrace it. Now, other people will always tell me, I don't have any choice, Brother Jonas, because I need to provide for my family. Now, if you don't have any choice, then love what you do. If you cannot love what you do, then you are just messing around. Yeah? If you don't love what you do, then you are just doing... Maybe you're the headache of your company, and maybe you're not really living your best life, giving your very best. So that's one thing. Like, one life to live, one life to live, and then you will not give the opportunity to utilize the gifts that God has given you. So my request for everybody tonight is ask yourself the things that you enjoy. I mean, you can do three, four things, but the ultimate. As for me, I gave up my nursing career to pursue this passion. Now, guys, maybe in the past one year, I spoke to more than 20,000 people, visited uh, maybe 17 provinces, and even conducted a lot of uh, book writing workshop, public speaking training. And this is what I love to do. I'm, I experience physical exhaustion, but to tell you honestly, I am enjoying it. And I love what I do. Amen? So you ask yourself, during those moments, I was able, I came with an answer that I just want to speak to inspire. This is what I love to do. I enjoy talking to people, inspiring people than just working the hospital. Yeah? That's our second, okay? How to discover your passion. You ask yourself the things that you enjoy a lot, wherein you feel like you are in your best self. Amen? Of course, I want to read. Do we have our friends here? Can you please share your, your comment? Yeah, I love that. Do we have some here? I just want to, my life that God has given me, Jermel. Yeah, thank you so much for being here. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Shout out to Jermel. Thank you so much. We also have 
Maribic Bermudez, God bless po. Thank you so much. Meg Carance is also watching. Wow, God bless coach. Thank you, my dear. And of course, Ida Yudok Liagon, thank you so much for tuning in. Napakahusay po and inspiring coach. Maraming salamat. To those who are watching now, please do share with us your biggest blessing for today. Okay, I would love to read that later. Okay, so thank you so much for tuning in. Again, please do share your biggest blessing this week because I want to magnify that. The more that we share our blessings, the more that uh, we will experience or receive more blessings in life, okay? So going back to discovering our purpose, our passion in life, number one is soul searching or quiet contemplation. Number two is asking yourself the things that you enjoy. You investigate, okay? You ask yourself the things that you enjoy. After asking yourself the things that you enjoy, number three is to experiment. Yeah, this is This is it. I did a lot of uh, experimentation. I had I started a vlog, and then after a year, I failed. I stopped working on that vlog, and then also I started giving talks. I was a bit afraid, but then I was able to pursue that. Elisa Marcelino is watching. Thanks for the inspiration. This is Elisa. Actually, is one of our most passionate teachers, and I know that she already discovered her purpose, her passion in life, which is to inspire students and to bless students. Actually, author Elisa is working as an educator, and she's in her best self doing that. Yeah, I love that. So number three is experimentation. Wow, you experiment. You tried. Okay, I'll pursue my passion. Example, you want to cook. Okay, I'll try. Maybe let's see the reaction of other people, and then mess up, and then fail, and then try again. I tried to have my Facebook uh, page, and then I failed. I started another one. I started my YouTube channel, and then failed, and started another one. But actually, this... You know, I, I even started also in sales. Okay, I also started doing. Uh, I also started real estate. I started a lot of things, multi-level marketing. I did almost most of those things, and I started to think whether this is my calling and whether this is what like will give me my my best self. That's what I did. So I experiment. Okay, and um, you need to act. You need to act. You need to experiment. Even small things, even baby steps can do. And that's what I want to encourage everyone. Example, you want to try public speaking. You try to speak in your Facebook account. You try to start your classes, of course. Thanks for the inspiration. Yeah, Weng Weng is watching. Thank you so much. Marami salamat po. Messing up and failing is part of your journey. So if you will see people who pursue their passion in real estate, a graduate of uh, pre-medicine, pursue the uh, career in real estate, a nurse also, pursue the career in... Uh, Make up, yeah. I have a friend, okay. So, I don't know, like, this is not adhering to the status quo. Mm -hmm. This is what I call really purpose and passion because you are not being dictated by society to do what you want to do, and this is all because product of reflection. So, the first thing that you will do, uh huh, you will mess up, you will experience resistance. Yeah, expert. That's why you need to experiment because you will realize people. You will discover people who will not support you. A lot actually did not support me because still, even my family, they are still thinking that I will become the best nurse. They are still thinking that I will work in the United States of America to become a chief nurse. They are still thinking that I'll become a dean of the College of Nursing. That's what they are thinking. But hey, I want to I want to write books. I want to speak to inspire. But then. My three years, four years journey, actually my preparation was around four, five years. And then when I pivoted, when I shifted, I, I messed up in my first year. Experienced a lot of rejection, even to the point that I wanted to give up. Yeah, I wanted to surrender my dreams, like throw in the towel and call it quits. It happened to me one night, you know, after sending a lot of proposals to different companies, different institutions, I was actually surprised not surprised i was hurt when almost everyone rejected me i was so hurt and most of those people that i trusted and people that i love and even people that are close to me were close to me at that time judge me what are you doing okay you should not be doing those things and i needed to collect myself yeah i needed to remind myself that i have big dreams that i can still do something that i need to support myself that i needed to pray so hard so that God will become part of my mission, of my plan. And I did not give up. Okay? In fact, even if I was just supporting myself at that time, I still pursued my passion. 
So again, I improved my craft. I attended a lot of training and seminars. I even started writing books, even if my books are not bestsellers. I started also connecting with a lot of people, building my connection. I did not stop. It, it was, it, I did not stop even if it was very tough, very difficult on my end. A lot of sleepless nights. I cried a bucket of tears and it was so difficult. But I recollected myself and thought, I have a dream and I need to fight for that. And I need to move and I will never stop until I hit that. And for one year, I was having that ups and downs. I wanted to give up, wanted to pursue, wanted to give up again. Moments like that. We are like fighting. I'm fighting with myself. Jonas, hey, you're a nurse. You can still work in the United Kingdom. You pass the UKRN written exam. You can still pursue your passion in there. Or you can take the NCLEX. You can work in America. Yeah. So, but during those moments, still, God was actually dragging me to my purpose. And I'm grateful that I experimented a lot because it made me very strong. Because even if you are already doing your passion, even if you think you're already strong, there will be still a lot of resistance. There will still be a lot of rejection. People will laugh at you. People will judge you. People will tell negative things about you. But if you are not strong that much inside, you will never finish what you started. So experimentation for me is messing up, experience some small wins. And then after that, you fail and then pick yourself up, learn again, and then you try again. That's, that's part of it. And I was so grateful. I'm grateful that I did that. I did not give up. Okay. And I, I continue doing it. Today, I actually attended one workshop where in some of the attendees are on the verge of giving up. I conducted a recollection activity wherein some have suicidal ideation. And imagine just by spending the whole day with these students who are on the verge of giving up, gave them hope. I spoke to them after the training and asked them, what did you learn? And a lot of them told me, like, I was, I was given hope that it's not yet the end, that I can still pick myself up, that my difficulties are part of my journey. We need more people to do that. We need more people to remind others that they can still dream big dreams. We need to remind other people that difficulties in our lives are part of growing up. Yeah. So I was thinking if I did not pursue my passion, if I gave up during moments of rejection and during moments that nobody believes in me, I was not able to save those people, to inspire those people. And it's a ripple effect. And I believe that one talk can change a person's life. Because for me, I changed, it changed my life. I attended a training. And because of that training, because of that seminar, it changed my life. I became who I am today. Not just with the books that I read, but also with the training and seminars that I attended. So me, being a, one of the thought leaders here in the Philippines, I believe with all my heart that motivation is very important because it can save people and it can change lives of people and it can propel people to success. That's why I don't stop doing what I do now. Even if I face with a lot of rejection, I will never stop, yeah? That's number three, you try to experiment. If you want to pursue your career of being a baker or, or, or a chef or a restaurant owner, you try small, small wins, you know? Then experiment again, try, fail, try again. If you want to pursue a singing career, Try and then fail and then try and then fail again. And then one day you will be surprised if you will not stop and, and you will hit that, that moment of triumph, the day that you are waiting for. Okay? You try first. Don't just give up and tell yourself, oh, I, I, I don't want to pursue this dream. I'm afraid maybe people will laugh at me. People will surely laugh at you and people will surely judge you. They will. We are not excused. The most successful thought leader now, the most successful people in their industry or in the in their craft most of these people experience also a lot of failures a lot of rejection and you are not excused you want to become successful with what you do you want to pursue your passion in life there will be a lot of rejection and resistance now you learn to get back up okay you learn to stand up that's the skill that you need to learn okay that's number three number four number four is to always ask for feedback because other people they can observe that yeah People can observe, number four, to investigate, to ask for feedback. They know the things that you enjoy. I asked one of my friends before. I just want to ask, what are the things that you think I love to do? I love to speak. When we are together, what's the most prominent dream in my heart? And one of my friends told me, you know what, bro? Whenever we are together the whole day, you always talk about books. 
You always talk about writing a book. You always talk about speaking in front of people. You never stop doing that. And it's always part of your, whenever you are dreaming, you always include those things, two things. Writing a book and speaking to inspire. And also one of my friends came to me, investigated, and asked me, oh, I want to ask us, well, Brother Jonas, we are together in the past four years, five years. What do you think the things that I enjoy a lot, based from your observation? And this friend of mine, she loves event hosting. She loves to plan for the details of a birthday celebration, details of a wedding ceremony. She loves that. She's enjoying. For me, I cannot do that. For me, it's exhausting. And I'm not really good in checking the details, whether the, um, the sound system was properly set up. We have all the registration form, we inform all the guests. I, I don't enjoy that. I'm not passionate about that. But my friend, she was so passionate about doing that. And when I told her, she decided also to resign from her full-time job because she felt like she was dragging herself to work. And today actually is a culmination, the culmination of her dream because today she had her first big break handling one of our events and i'm just so proud of, of this friend of mine yeah it's it's really true i also have a friend who asked me before brother jonas what are the things that you think i love to do and i enjoy it i enjoy it a lot and you know what she, she had a lot she has a lot she had a lot of makeups and all these lippies and so many things eyelashes extensions so many and whenever we're together, she's so passionate sharing about her secrets to becoming more beautiful and fresh and styles, tips about hacks, about having that light makeup and all those stuff. She will never stop talking about that. And you know what? Maybe in the past five years, she had her own salon. I'm serious. She had her own nail spa. In fact, one of the her defining moments, she was tasked to do some makeup of some Showtime host. She did that. I saw that on her Facebook. I was very happy after two years, okay, seeing her becoming successful in her craft. That's what we want to do. We don't want to box people just because society expects them to do so. I don't want you to stay in a job that you hate. Just so sad. According to research, maybe around 70, 80% in America, they got to work that they hate. And they stay that for 20 in, in that place. They work for 20 years. My gosh. Where will you become happy? Yeah? You don't like your job, but you stayed anyway. And it's just so sad. Because maybe you have given a lot of opportunities, you know, to enjoy life. Again, one life to live. One life to live. There's no rewind. And for me, as for me now, three years of becoming a motivational speaker, writing eight books, publishing eight books. I already published eight books. I trained almost 400 plus authors to produce them. Now they have their own book too. And they're also inspiring many people, being featured in television, inspiring people also through their books. I did that. If I thought small during that time, if I did not say yes to that calling, maybe I miss so many things in my life. Yeah, I'm traveling all over the Philippines. I have some invitation overseas as well. And for me, it's, it's pure happiness, pure bliss. Because I think this is what God calls me to do. I believe with all my heart that when you are doing what God calls you to do, you will never experience being tired. Physically, physical exhaustion, yeah. But deep within you, you are fulfilled and happy. I think Jim Carrey once said, you will fail in the things, doing the things that you don't like. Why not fail, okay, in doing the things that you like? So why not? Why not try it? For me, the biggest, the most painful moment of your life, one of the most painful moments of your life is when you're on your deathbed and you have that regret in your heart why you did not pursue the things that you want to do. Today, you're strong. You can still do that. So I met many elderly people, old people, and most of them, they don't actually regret the things that they did and that they fail. But when you ask them, their biggest regret are their dreams that being materialized. Their biggest regret was actually moments that they should do something, pursue something, but they stop those dreams because of fear, because of fear of failure, because they think that people will laugh at them. Most of them, they do that. And also another research, I read one research, they asked um, old population, elderly in one shelter, 
for the elders, elderly. And they did a survey. And they asked them most painful moments of their lives, things that they regret a lot. Most of them, they don't regret for that failed business, failed endeavor, like any dream that they did not hit the goal. They don't regret much about that. But according to research, most of these old people, they regret so much for the things that they did not do. So when will you when will you will you want to do that to pursue your passion? We will, we will be surprised that one day you don't have enough time, that one day it's game over. You, you see the story of Jovit Baldivino. I honor this singer. In fact, I listen to his music and I like him as well. He was 29 years old, was able to pursue his dream and passion of music. And that's a life well lived. What if during those his audition at uh, PGT, he said, Oh, I cannot do this do this okay i'm i'm weak and i'm not that much good whenever he followed those self-limiting beliefs do you think he was able to touch people through his music no but because she act he acted on his dream and that alone will tell us that life is not permanent and there's no assurance that we're still alive tomorrow and that motivated me it motivated me a lot knowing the fact that one day all of us will die why not do the things that will make you happy now Okay, you just need to pray for it. Okay, you just need to seek the Lord, and which reminds me for number five. Okay, how to discover your passion, your purpose in life is seek God for guidance. Okay, seek God for guidance. Before we continue, let's acknowledge those people who write in the comment section. Okay, please do write also your comments, and I would love to read that. You know, I'm watching coach. Shout out to author Nati Salcedo watching from Natonin Mountain Province. Thank you so much for being here with us tonight. Also, I want to say hi to a lot of people. Okay. Hi to Chel Lorenzo. God bless poster. Thank you so much for tuning in. Shout out to Mayet Mandapat. Good evening, sir. Thank you and God bless. Chel Lorenzo. God bless poster. Maraming salamat. We also have Weng Weng Jalin. Good evening. Thank you and God bless. Okay, to everyone watching now, please do share your biggest blessing today. Babasahin natin yan. Elisa Marcelino, thanks for the inspiration. Author Elisa Marcelino is watching from the province of Quirino. And also Nati Salcedo watching from Natonin Mountain Province. We have here Joylin De Jesus Puwasan. Thank you po. Pagpalain ka pa. We have Lorna Similiaris. Thank you so much for tuning in. Nati Salcedo, my blessing this week. I was able to share my blessings. Sana all, di ba? Pinakamalaking biyaya daw niya ay nakapagbigay siya, nakatulong siya sa ibang tao. Palapakan natin si author Nati Salcedo from Natonin Mountain Province. I love that. Meg Caransa, nako medyo mahaba-haba ito ha. Meg Caransa said, we need to remember that two things are for sure in this world. First, Change is constant, so whatever is going on right now, it can change. Number two, everything has an end, even the most difficult thing can end. And I think my biggest blessing today is I am now able to understand that there are things that I can control and just allow God to change it for me. Wow, your biggest blessing today is you realize to just let go of the things that you cannot control. Wow, how about Wengi Bailon Abang watching from... Summer, sir, thank you po and God bless. Maraming salamat, ha. Um, Ma'am Wenji, pwede bang ishare mo sa amin yung biggest blessing mo for today. Let's continue. Number five is about seeking the Lord. Now, my story being a nurse turned motivational speaker and author is what I did. When I felt that call, I realized in 2015, 2015, I told myself I want to become an author. I want to pursue my passion full time. And at that time, guys, I, I'm still supporting my family. I, I need to have a job, like a 15, 30 salary. I need to stay in Oman. I need to work. I need to support my family. But I was already very clear with what I want to do. But I did not just jump. Immediately, no. You know what I did? Uh-huh. I sought the Lord. And I always pray to God, Lord, if this is what you really want me to do, you want me to become a motivational speaker, you want me to write books, then please guide me i want to pursue this passion full time but today i cannot do it my younger sibling was going to school i need to send her to college my family they are rooting for me still i did not build my house and i i need to think it over and over again but i sought the lord and during my quiet moments 
you know dark moments of my uh, of my room yeah i was under my blanket and then talking to god and telling the lord lord i really want to pursue this passion that was 2015 now to make it very clear for everybody i resigned in 2019 so i had that call 2015 15 16 17 18 19, almost four years and you know what i did during those four years i prepared myself i planned and i asked the lord like what i do now i prayed for this seven years ago every day lord i want to become a motivational speaker i think there are some who can carry this work as a nurse but for me i think i really want to speak lord i really want to write books oh lord please help me you can just use other people you can just utilize other people to become a nurse but i love i i really want to become a motivational speaker now here's my biggest call in 2019 because that year i had that prayer wherein god sealed it and he said by around feb 2019 jonas you go home and i felt that in my heart so i need to prepare first i had series of prayer and fasting yeah i had daniel's fast i don't know maybe some of you knows daniel's fast you will only eat fruits without rice brown rice will only drink um, water no color drinks also allowed and I did that for 21 days, just praying to the Lord, not even asking whether it's the right time to go home, to resign, earning 130000 a month. But I will risk it from in going home to become a motivational speaker, starting from scratch. And I asked the Lord, Lord, please help me. I want to resign. Please guide, bless my decision. 21 days. That was around March 2019. But still... I was not satisfied. I felt like I needed more prayers. And I had another 21 days fasting. Same, Daniel's fast. And I felt in my heart still, after 21 days of praying, fasting, I just rested for one week and then I had another 21 days again. I was so thin at that time. I'm only eating vegetable and fruits and, and brown rice and chapati, no man. And Last, after 21 days, I still felt I needed more prayers. Fasting, prayer and fasting is very helpful. And I had a 40-day prayer and fasting. 40 days. So much temptation to eat nice food. But I was only eating, I'm not even eating egg. I'm only eating uh, beans like that. And also fruits and vegetables. I was so thin. After 40 days of prayer and fasting, I felt the peace in my heart and it confirmed me. Actually, I ended that around September 21, 2019. And I submitted my resignation letter and I informed my boss that I want to go home. I want to do other things. Now, I, I've given myself three years timeline. You, ask, you pursue your dream for three years. Yeah, for three years. If nothing will happen, you can go back. Like, okay. This is this is so that I will not that be that much stress. Wait three years of being a being a speaker, being a coach maybe, and being a, an author. So if I will not succeed in the first three years, I will stop and embrace my nursing career. No, nobody can erase the fact that I'm a registered nurse, and no one can take away my master's in public health, my master's in nursing administration. I'm happy with my PhD in nursing education. No one can remove that. But on that day, I felt in my heart that God really wanted me. Okay. God really wanted me to go home. And on December 19, I ended my contract. I finished it. And I went home in the Philippines on December 27, 2019. After three days, January 1, I opened my publishing company. I opened my consultancy company. I started crafting my modules. I started um, marketing my, my training, my seminars. And now... After January 2022, December 2022, I spoke to 17, 18 provinces, even in, in uh, Mindanao. And I was able to produce 420 published authors. I trained them. They don't have any idea how to write a book, but I guided them. I, I really guided these people to write books, how to craft the title, everything, and how to motivate them and help them through my publishing company. And now I have 410 in just less than two years. Yeah, more than two years. 
And I also visited a lot of schools, conducted recollection activities that changed lives of people, mental health, embracing their season as a student. It did that, okay? And yeah, almost 20,000 people. And every day, uh, four days ago, I was in Botolan, Sambales, delivered in the Polytechnic College, at Polytechnic College of Botolan. The next day, I delivered a talk, a mental health and recollection for five one-third na Siglat Battalion of Philippine Army. And the next day, I was in a real estate company. And the next day also, this is what I do now. So you see the, the transition. I did not just jump the moment I felt like I didn't like what I do. Listen to me. How to pivot planning is very important. I'm not advising everyone here. Anyone who wants to pursue a dream or is living in life to resign now immediately. You know. In fact, I prepared financially before I resign. I bought a five hectare farmland. I told myself I need to buy this farmland because if something not so good will happen, at least huh, I can still survive. I can plant rice. I can plant vegetable. I can still eat three times a day. And number two is emotional preparation. I reminded myself that I will fail and it will be a difficult journey. But anyway, it's all right. It's all right. It's part of the journey. And number three, of course, I also prepared my family. See? Don't just pivot immediately. You seek the Lord. Okay, how to discover your purpose? You have some quiet time. You have some deep contemplation. Number two, you find the things that you love to do. Maybe you can monetize that. Yeah. Number three is to experiment. Try. Maybe take baby small baby steps or small steps. Enjoy. Fail, mess up, and then learn from it, get back up. That's what it is. Number four is to investigate, ask your closest friends the things that they think, the, th the things that they think you love doing. They observe that and they know that. Yeah. And number five is to seek the Lord. You seek God, okay? Because He knows better and He's the only one who can, who can actually help us. You cannot do it alone. You cannot do it alone. You need the Lord. Amen. And because of that, we will pray now. But before we pray, I want to acknowledge our friends who write in the comment section. Thank you so much. We have Rosemary Calantas watching from Bukidnon. I was there at, at uh, Central Mindanao University, my dear Rose. Nag-talk ako doon, okay? Student leaders of CMU. I was there. And I want to tell you, like, they are, they are amazing. One of the kindest people on earth, <laughs> okay? People from Bukidnon. Author Elisa Siatres Marcelino, I was able to mentor, give technical assistance to my colleagues on their demo teaching. For me, it's a blessing. Thanks, God, for the wisdom. Thank you so much for our gratitude corner. This is our practice here. Every time you watch Saturday at 6 p.m., you need to write your blessings, okay? This is our gratitude corner. Rosemary Aguila, gratitude. Thank you, sir, for your inspirational and motivational message. God bless po, sir. Yan. Marilyn Pacunla de Jesus. Ayun. Hi, good evening. Nalate ako. It's all right. You can have the um, team replay. Yeah. Jai Ramos, blessing you. Stay home. No? Sana lahat nasa bahay. Marilyn Pacunla de Jesus, good evening, sir. Thank you so much. So now, before we end, let us pray. Can I request everyone, wherever you are, I want you to close your eyes and feel the presence of the Lord. Experience God, encounter God right this very moment. You have the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We honor you, O God. We glorify you. We thank you, Lord, for today. You're an amazing God. And we love you. And we believe in you. You are our God, our Savior. Lord, we're here at the foot of your cross. And as we encounter you tonight, I pray, Lord God, that you cleanse us. Remove anything that's not pleasing to your eyes. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of compassion, for the gift of forgiveness. Thank you, Lord, that you are you never stop chasing us, even if we are not deserving. In our weaknesses, in our brokenness, in our sinfulness, you are still there. And thank you, Lord, for the, those gifts. Lord God, I just want to thank you for this opportunity that you gather this community together. I pray, Lord God, that you bless each and every person listening right now. I don't know what's going on in their lives, but I, I'm, I'm sure, Lord, that you know their problems. You know their struggles, their hopes right now. And I pray, Lord, that you embrace and guide them. Lord, I lift to you anyone watching now struggling in their mental health. Lord God, we believe that you're bigger than depression. You're bigger than anxiety disorder. And we know, Lord God, that whatever happens, they will, as long as they encounter you, they will experience healing. Lord, I lift to you the families of these people. I pray that you'll become the center of their relationship. If there are misunderstanding now, I pray, Lord God, for reconciliation. I pray for peace to manifest. I pray, Lord God, for restoration in their relationship. Lord, bless for those married here. Bless their spouse. For those who have kids, bless their kids. For those um, 
Uh, bless also their parents, oh God. I pray that will become the center of their relationship. I even lift to you, Lord God, their health, especially those who are watching now, who are sick right now. I pray for healing in Jesus' name, for the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God, for the gift of healing. And Lord, I, I just want to lift to you also the finance of these people. Those who are struggling financially, I pray, Lord God, that they will experience opportunities and blessings, financial uh, blessings, So oh God. We believe that you will provide. We'll do our very best. We will work hard. But we know that you will provide. You know, Lord God, that you will provide. And Lord, I just want to lift to you, Lord, their, their work, their job. Use them, Lord, for your greater glory. We also offer a special prayer, oh Lord, Lord, for those who are waiting for the result of their board examination. You prepare them, oh Lord, Lord, their hearts. And we know that victory is in their hands already. We're claiming victory, Lord God, that they will top and pass the licensure examination. And Lord, I just want to thank you for everything. Your biggest blessing today is the gift of life. And we thank you that we are alive and strong. Thank you, Lord God, for the gift of our family. Thank you, Lord God, for the comfortable home, nice people in our lives. All these good things happen in our lives, all because of you. And right this very moment, we just want to bring back to you all the glory and honor to the most powerful name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. We have the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yay! Maraming maraming salamat po sa lahat ng mga nanood. Thank you so much. Magkita-kita tayo ulit next week. Para sa isa na namang kwentuhan, okay? Ayan, i-shout out lang natin. Um, thank you, sir. Sabi ni Aileen Kanya, Kanya Zares, pagpalain ka pa. Marilyn Pakunla Desus, sir, paano ito mapapanood ko ulit? I-replay mo lang. Pag-end nito, you can click the replay button. Nandiyan lang siya, hindi siya madidelete. Okay? In lamang po. Maraming 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 salamat sa lahat ng nanood ngayon. From the bottom of my heart, thank you sa lahat ng mga tumuto. Mga team replay, thank you so much. Still, you can write your biggest blessing for today. Thank you also to CBRC TV, especially to Dr. Carl Balita for this opportunity. Maraming salamat for joining us sa aming Second International Author Summit. Yung presensya niyo po ay napakamahalaga sa amin and we appreciate that. Thank you so much. Pagpalain pa po kayo. And to the team of the CBRC TV, thank you so much. And that's it for today. Before I end, again, this is Brother Jonas for our topic, Discover Your Purpose dito sa ating Limitless Living Series, Experience Breakthrough in Every Area of Your Life. Na nag-iiwan ng katagang ito. Sa lahat ng mga nanonood ngayon, sana lahat kayo ay ulanin ng walang katapusang biyaya at pagpapala. At sana baguhin kayo ng siksik, liglig, at umaapaw na biyaya. With all of this, to God be the greatest glory. God bless everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you.